tired a lot. Ah, that's the game. <laughs> you just have to be exhausted as you're playing a superhero. And then the and then extra you, intensity kicks in. Yeah, and then you just kind of hit that. No, you know, it's um, it's kind of easy to do both because as much as it feels like fantastical to be in leather and stuff, um, a lot of it feels quite real because first of all, you're filming at night in the city. A lot of it is like you're actually running. You're doing a lot of the stunts. Um, there's an element to it that is grounded, even though it is a fantasy world. But I wonder if, if you ever get to set and look at the side and go, oh, God, we're talking great. Like, it's just a scene where you're driving in the car and talking. All the time. All the time. Yeah, like, we appreciate those more. Yeah, huh? for sure. But I think we got people who want to talk to you, cool. so here we go. I can um, still hear you. Okay. Thank you for coming. I haven't seen the new season yet, but I am watching. Uh, but, uh, my question is not about the season, it's about um, if you could choose a superhero for a film, what would that be? Which superhero? Uh, that I would play in a film? Yes. Um, I would love to play Wolverine. Whoa. There you go. <laughs> You just got all of their attention. I like that. Now I have to make that happen. You really should. That'd be amazing. So my question is, what, um, what is the weirdest thing that has happened to you on the set of Arrow? Fainting with Fainting. Katie Cassidy was pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, the weirdest thing. God, you know what? That, that's probably it. I have to say. Um, just the first day being there when I had my costume on for the first time this season, that was weird. It wasn't weird, it was surreal. Um, because it felt, I felt like a different person. And I, I mean, it was, uh, it was a really incredible and emotional experience, but it was weird. I was like, who am I? Because, you know, especially when you grow up, you're just a, a person, a kid, especially as an actor, you have so many doubts and so many, and then all of a sudden you're in this position where you're, you know, literally just playing a hero. So that was pretty weird too. Thank you for your question. Bye. Um, of all of the Arrow episodes, which is your favorite? Uh, I actually loved my first like big episode in my introduction to the show. It was 511, um, when you sort of see Dinah's, how she became um, Black Canary and, and got her cry. I just love that because it sort of, it shows a part of her life before and, and it, a part of her journey into becoming this, you know, this person that she is. It was a really fun episode to shoot and I also felt very new to the process, so it, it, there's like a lot of nostalgia around that episode. Yeah. What was your favorite? Definitely the season finale. The season six. The season six? Yeah. Love it. Well, that was really, bless you by the way, that was really fun to shoot. Yeah. 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 So given that you said that you're nostalgic because you are new, does that mean that, uh, do you have a set routine of how you handle uh, a, a shooting day of what you do and what your process is? Uh, and you, have you gotten down pat or what you do? A ritual? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it changes every day depending on what we're doing. So if we're doing a ton of action, like it will include, you know, foam rolling and stretching uh, before we shoot. If it's a very emotional day, uh, I'll listen to music. Uh, and. You know, it just sort of, it, it, it depends. But yeah, I do try to sort of have a ritual where I relax, listen to music, you know, work out or just stretch. Um, because it's a long shooting day. We shoot anywhere from 14 to sometimes 20 hours, um, five days a week, so sometimes six. So I know that would probably vary from day to day or scene to scene, but do you have like a, if you look at the equivalent of what the iPod would be, do you have a Black Canary playlist? I do, I have a- So what's on there? Yeah, um, do I have my phone on me? No, I don't. Um, <laughs> I have everything from Beyonce to like hard rock to yeah. I have yes, yeah. I have I have everything on there just for her different moods. I even have some classical music on there. I don't know when she would listen to it, but it helps get me in the zone. <laughs> helps you get there. Yeah. All right. Next question. Uh, thank you for coming again, from Puerto Rico. Thank you for having me. Uh, my question is just a little different because I wanted to know if you your good friends in the series, uh, Curtis. No, how does he does his, uh, say suit up? How does he does his braids so fast? <laughs> <laughs> he, 
um, his explanation is that Kid Flash does it for him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I just love how brave she is. I mean, she will go head first into any situation. She will be at the front. She will say, you know, she will be the first one to take down everybody on the front line. Like, she's just absolutely fearless. And she's a flawed character. She's in no way perfect, but she is brave. And um, I am sometimes afraid to leave my house. So <laughs> I really admire that about her. I admire that too, about her That's awesome. Thank you. Did you ever dream of being an actor? Like if I were to ask you five years ago, hey, do you ever think of being an actor for the series Arrow, uh, what would you reply to? This is the only thing I've ever wanted to do since I was five. Um, so five years ago, I would have never thought this would have been possible. I've been auditioning for things and acting since I was about nine, but um, I never would have thought this was possible. This is literally my dream come true, and every day I still feel so grateful to go to work, to have the opportunity to meet you guys. Um, yeah, this is really, it's, it's unbelievable that it actually happened this way. Of course, do you want to be an actor? Yeah. You do? Awesome. You should pursue it, for sure. So, since we have them here, so there's probably people in the audience who also want it. How much of it is the same as when you were nine, and how much of it is different? Because I know the grind of the 20 hour days and all that, hour, you know, and all that stuff, but how much of your process is kind of the same in terms of, and you're just on a bigger platform, maybe? That's really weird to think about. I've never, it's exactly the same. I feel exactly the same now on that set as I did when I was nine years old in my acting class, you know, pretend whatever it was I was pretending. Um, it's just fantasy and imagination and, and fun and it keeps you like in a childlike state almost. So I think that's part of what I love about it. Next question. Hi, um, now that Dinah has seen uh, Laurel's the, the tra tragedy, um, how do you, um, do you think that uh, the new Black Canary and the old Black Canary, uh, the doppelganger, uh, can team up in the next season? I have to say, when I watched back the finale, I was like, I kind of like this duo. I was <laughs> feeling it. So I really hope so, because I think they've both been through a lot. They obviously have a lot of obvious similarities, right? But um, now they've been through emotional tribula uh, trials and tribulations that are similar as well. So I would, I would like them to pair up. I think they will. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure you'll see more of them together next year. Thank you. Um, How is your relationship with the, the, the writers in terms of, because uh, once you sort of have ownership of the character, uh, how, how does that work in terms of uh, being able to tell them suggestions or things? Or uh, Talk to me a little bit about that. Oh, I have a great relationship with the writers. They're very sweet and talented and open group of people. Um, and yes, actually, this is, this year was the first time that I felt comfortable asking questions. Like when I first joined, I was I didn't want to, you know, like just step on any feet or anything. But now, I, when I first started to ask them, hey, what do you think about this? Or does she, maybe she's feeling that way. They were so just open to discussing it. And it was very freeing for me in the role. And, and just as an artist, I think in general, to know that you have a voice, um, especially as an actor, sometimes you feel like you want to, you know, you're like, placed here and you have to say these words and do these things and you're always worried or am I going to have a job so you don't want to speak up. Uh, so it's an incredible group of people that let you have a voice and, um, and have some input. And you know sometimes actors who are on series and can, you know feel trapped by the fact that they have to play the one thing within the sort of the alchemy of the TV show. But with the Arrowverse you get to sort of explore different sides of one character because you could be on Earth whatever two or three or so is there any sort of unexplore aspect of the character that you would love to sort of another version of that, uh, have you thought about that? I have and one that's one of the things I actually talked to the writers about recently is that um, one of my favorite lines that Dinah had was in, I think it was last season uh, in a conversation with Diggle she said that she found an apartment and there's like a little garden in it and I thought that's so neat you know who would think that this girl you know who this woman who um, is the way that she is with like gardening or even care about like <laughs> flowers or I was like, that's really cool. I love the idea of Dinah having this sort of life at home, this, you know, where she's just like feeding her cat or like, you know, watering her plants. 
Um, for me, I think those are the things that make a character the most interesting because it, it makes them human. So I would just, I would love to see more of that. Next question. Hi, good afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm a great friend, great friend. Um, seeing, working as a team with Wild Love and Centurion Effect, I especially love your chemistry with Deagle. Can you please talk about um, how you like working with them and how your experience has been working with them? They're the worst. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> they are. They're some of my dearest friends and sweetest people. And um, I think that any kind of chemistry that you see is from real life because I just absolutely love all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Hi, Puerto Rico. Thank you. I have one question. Go ahead. It's a great question. The most emotional episode you have uh, from with your cast? Um, with the cast, it was probably the um, the season six finale. Not to give any way, any spoilers away, but if you if you saw it, you know um, that was very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> also, this uh, in um, in what was it six twelve when uh, Vince passes? That was very hard as well. Do you have another question? Yeah. Thank you. Season six finale. Uh, is the season six finale, you know, the one that ends with the islands? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> nope, that never happened. Nope. <laughs> so let's move on from that. You were talking about you would like to see how your character unwinds on screen, but how do you unwind? What do you do when you're not working? learning a scene or you know what yeah. grinding at, at your career I'm actually very much a homebody um, so we have three dogs at home so I just cuddle up with them we order some food what kind of it? Uh, so one is a lab hound mix one is a pit bull and then one is a pit bull mix but she kind of looks like a pig beaver hybrid <laughs> three that's a lot of work three but they all found us we didn't intend nice. on having any dogs and literally we found them in the swamp on the street and like outside of the grocery store nice. okay. now we're crazy <laughs> so basically when you're walking the dogs and learning lines so yeah for sure it's you no know, they they give me a lot of peace and especially with us moving around so much now it's like they give us a real sense of home all right so i'm always amazed by the fact that in tv shows that don't factor in you know, rehearsal, like you guys are on the go, and then it's, it's like you get the size, and this is what we're doing, and it's always like, you know, like a rush to get to work on the one thing. So you were talking about the chemistry. How, how do you guys sort of establish your relationship outside of the characters when you're always like, you know, uh, you know, don't, you don't get that time, or do you have that time? You mean because we're always working? Yeah. We hang out, actually, like a decent amount. Um, that doesn't always happen in TV. No, yeah. it doesn't. Okay. Sometimes people hate each other. <laughs> um, but no, we get a good, a good amount of time to hang out. And also, again, like doing these cons um, is a great opportunity to work together as a team, um, to travel new places together. So you're, you know, it's like kind of bonding. bonding. Yeah, yeah. No, we're very lucky as a cast. All right. So cons are all about fandom and, and what brings out your inner fan. Besides, you know, sitting down and watching. You know, that becomes her 100 times. <laughs> well, that is a good one. I love that one. Yeah, that, we'll, we'll geek we'll out about the Yeah, they, they don't need to see our middle straight <laughs> geeking out sessions. Um, so, what makes me fan out? Yeah, because I wonder if since you were, you played a character in Walking Dead, was that sort of your first taste of what fandom was like on, on, on TV? Or yes. is it different with Arrow fans than it was with the Walking Dead fans? Or do you think that the, it's one being passionate about something is sort of what unites? I think the Walking Dead fans, I felt like their presence was a little more like in person. Like when we went anywhere, it was like everybody knew. And Arrow, I feel a lot of the fandom online more. Um, I don't know if that's a real thing, I'm sure, you know, but, or why it felt that way. It might have just been where we were at the time in Georgia, but um, in that little town, it was like everyone, uh, you know, was kind of like, they knew what was up. But in Vancouver, no one really cares. They've been, they've been there for a while. They've been there for a while. And Vancouver has a lot of other productions, so maybe that's a very good point. I actually think that could be it. Yeah. yeah. So do you go online? Because that's a slippery slope. Uh, what's, what's your handle on that aspect of being a public figure and an actor who's on a hit show? Um, well, I think social media can be used for either very good or 
not very good and it's very important it's a responsibility to anybody on social media celebrity or not to to use it for good and to spread positivity because it's just so insidious and awful when it goes the other way and it can really sort of spiral out of control so I really try to stay away from negativity online sometimes I'll respond to it if I think it's appropriate but I try to just focus on staying positive staying with the positive people spreading good messages being kind and I think that that speaks a lot louder if you just focus on that and the other stuff slips away do you have anybody you go to besides your directors when you're working on on your episodes you go to for critique uh, so because actors, good actors are usually not very good at critiquing themselves. So do you have a go-to point, somebody you talk to about anything that you're worried about? Or? I do. Um, I, well, Mark Guggenheim, who's the executive producer and the creator for you know, the head, head honcho, uh, he's very, very cool and he's always open to talk about the character and questions. And also James Bamford, who's our um, stunt, stunt director, and he's also, he directed the uh, season six finale. He, mm -hmm directs a lot of the episodes. I, I text him all the time and I'm like, did that suck? Was that terrible? Was I? And uh, so he's great. He's a, he's a good friend and I go, I trust him a lot. Yeah. Right. Next question. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for coming to the island one more time. Uh, during the, the time passing by, there's a lot of actors that have said and shared that there's a certain character that they played that they influenced their personal life. I would like to know if Black Canary, you playing that role, has influenced you in your personal life. For sure, yes. Um, I was sort of joking, sort of not, when I was saying before that some days it's hard to leave my house. I actually have quite bad anxiety, and um, I feel that I have become braver myself and less anxious and more able to kind of just like meet life on life's terms since playing Dinah. Um, I also stood up to a guy at a bar the other day who was, uh -huh. who was bothering some ladies, and I don't know if I would have done that before I played Dinah either. <laughs> so yeah, she's definitely made me a stronger person and a better person and helped me in my personal life. Hi. Hi. My question is that uh, in the we offer a different amount of house that black women is joining the Arrowverse uh, crossover. How, we, how do you feel about that and are you hoping to be in that episode? Yeah, that's, that was a moment that I geeked out for. <laughs> I found out, I got really excited when I found out that woman was coming and that we we're gonna to start to integrate Gotham into Star City. Uh, I'm so excited for that. Again, all the strong, awesome women characters we can get, I want them all, I wanna work with them all. So I, I can't wait for that. I don't know what capacity we're gonna be working with her yet, but um, I, I hope I'm there for it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the first question is, from what characteristics of the character makes you aside from the man the, or the black canary and which one of those you take home and you grow up to be a good person with that character? Wow, so like which which elements of her personality are different from the other black canaries? Yeah, and which you take home? Um, you know, I think Oh, if I could see what makes her different, I mean, you know, there are obvious differences. She's not a lawyer, she's not a, I mean, she's just such a different person. She's had her own experiences. She comes from a different place. She doesn't have a family necessarily in the same way that the Lances do. Um, so I think she is, I don't want to say more independent because they're extremely independent, but she's independent because she's alone. She was until she had her team. Um, that would probably be the biggest difference. And um, I don't know if I take that part of it home with me, but it definitely makes me appreciate the family that I do have and the friends that I do have. Um, because sometimes I feel her solitude when I'm at work. So then I come home and it's like, oh, you like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. That's what we Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Juliana. Um, what advice would you, as a person, as an actress, what advice would you give to your character? case uh, dying what advice will you tell her about that? because you can see what happens to her from the outside so from the outside as a person what kind of advice would you give that's a really good question I think I tell her to have a little fun <laughs> relax you know like have a little fun I think um, you know she's a very intense character and uh, 
I think we will see more of that as she kind of grows and and finds herself more through these next uh, through this next season. Yeah, just you know, let loose. <laughs> Have you thought about directing at all? Uh, is that something that interests you? Because that's, that's something that happens with TV series and somebody's interested in that. So I wonder if I was thinking when you said that you love to work with other strong female female uh, capacity that you could, you could do so is directing. So is that something that's crossed your mind at all? I actually have really like no interest in directing. <laughs> <laughs> How come? It's, it seems like a lot of work. A lot of work. I mean, it's like they're they're the longest. Like they have to tell everyone what to do. Like actors can be like really annoying, and you have to control them. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> no, never. <laughs> um, but I would like to write. That is something I'm definitely interested in. Yeah, I I would love to write, um, and I would be happy to write an episode of Arrow. Happy. Right? Hi, um, my question is. What advice will you give someone with anxiety? Um, how to handle it? Because I suffer from it and I want to know what I want Well, my advice would actually be to do exactly what you're doing right now, which is a big deal for somebody with anxiety. Um, when it, I was at my worst, like to the point where I was like, I might need to go check into a hospital because it was just so bad. I read a book, and the name escapes me now, but Basically what it said to do is no matter how scared you are, like you know when something feels impossible because your anxiety is so bad, you do it anyway. Like even if you're shaking, even if you get sick, you just, even if it's just a walk around the block, you just do it because once you start overcoming little obstacles, just baby steps at a time, you're all of a sudden able to do something bigger. Um, so coming to things like this, talking to you guys, realizing it's not scary, um, those are all the things that fix my anxiety. Um, so, I mean, just being here and asking that question is a great thing for, for that. And I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Next question. Hello. Um, I was wondering, uh, we're talking about how the characteristics from your other universes. How would you picture uh, your character on, from other universes? Would it be a good person, a bad, a bad guy, a good guy? So the Arrowverse, we've seen like some of them, good guys are like, good or bad in other universes, uh, how you picture it? You, that you want to uh, write a uh, script for Arrow, but it would be a good test and a good thing. How Again, would you do it? I always say, like, I just, I, it just, I think it's funny to imagine Dinah as totally like not tough, not a hero, like she's baking cookies, <laughs> she's like a mom. You know, I think, I, and I also like that duality of like, you can have a character who's totally opposite. So, you know, I should probably have a couple of kids, and, but um, I think she'd still be like a very, you know, strong and noble character, but just totally domesticated. <laughs> so, I was like a, a good person, and then get her in some way into the action of the. Yeah, that would be cool too. Like that makes that even more interesting, right? That's the thing. Like you have a, a superhero who's tough and kills people, but she likes to plant flowers. So like if you have a woman who's the opposite and then she finds her strength, I think that's awesome. Thank you. That's a cool question. Thank you. So I think let's talk about perspective, because you were talking about how directing doesn't interest you because of the, all the hard work and all that stuff. <laughs> so lazy. But, yeah. But that's what I mean. The amount of work you guys have to do to sort of get to where you need to go to be on camera, I mean, that, you know, I think it's skills, what skills you have, you should be uh, uh, appreciative of the skills that you have. So how much of a training or how much actual, when you're not on set, how much of your time is still sort of dedicated to being ready to be on camera? If you could talk about that, there's a lot of dedication to not only the 20 hours that you're there shooting, so talk about that. Yeah, that's true. I think, you know, the physicality is the biggest thing. So you've got to stay, we have to stay in shape. Um, not even just for our bodies and how we look, but for the hours to like, get through it. You have the to stamina. Be, yeah, the stamina, exactly. No fainting. No, no fainting. <laughs> not this year. Not next year. Um, <laughs> yeah, also training was like once a week or so we'll do some training with the, with the bow staff. Um, you know, we'll go into the stunt room and we'll learn fight sequences and stuff like that. But you can also, the best way to learn both staff, it turns out, is to just like watch TV or have a conversation. <laughs> just like, you know, hang out and kind of forget that it's there. Mm -hmm. So it, it sort of integrates itself into your life all the time. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So in terms of, you mentioned before at the beginning uh, of the conversation, with this, it's like you look, the first time you were shooting, you sort of looked in the mirror and went, who am I? When do you think, or did you have a moment where you felt that you finally could have handle on the character? Could you zero in on when did you feel that that happened for you? 
it's interesting because i think it's always a an evolution as an actor as an artist it's just as a human you're never at the top of of who you are you know it's like it's always a growth but i must say it wasn't really until like the last couple episodes of season six that i was like i think i i'm really feeling like i'm in her and comfortable and like not questioning myself like i'm like no that dinah would do that no she wouldn't do that and so that was only very recently actually and i have to remind myself sometimes that the other guys have had a lot of years to put yeah. these characters together um so it's been a really awesome discovery the past uh the, like the last few months of working cool yeah next question i love your outfit thank you you're beautiful thank you, you too for coming. <laughs> hope you enjoy your as an actress, you you feel well expectations are like right. How do you live up to everyone's expectations at the same time that you keep being yourself and keep doing what you love? Are you afraid to sometimes fail? You know, to everyone's expectations. Yes, yes, very much so. It's that's a very scary thought. Um, because there are a lot of people whose eyes are on you and it's like the expectations of the fans, of the, your bosses, your, you know, it's... So I think the best thing to do is to just forget it entirely and if you're meeting your own expectations, you're good. Because you know, like we know if we're being truthful with ourselves. So if I know that I'm not working out enough, if I know that I didn't study for that scene enough, if I didn't think about the character enough, I know in my heart I can be truthful and, and I'm saying I'm not meeting my own expectations. So when I am doing those things, that's when I'm like, I actually don't care. And it's a very empowering place to be when you can say, I'm happy with myself, I'm happy with the work I'm doing, and I'm doing my best. So I actually don't care if it's not your best. You do your best on whatever you need to do. And I think that's an important lesson. Thank you. What's your favorite character in the Arrowverse um, that's not yours, and why? I am really in love with Nyssa, Katrina Law's character. I, right? Like every time she's on screen, I'm just like, how come she's so sad? Like everything she says is just like perfect. She's sassy, the delivery, she's hot. Like I just I love Nyssa and I wish, I hope we have her uh, a lot more this next season. In all seriousness, I would want to be a dog masseuse. I would want to open a <laughs> like I am dead serious. I want to open a massage parlor for dogs. It is the most relaxing thing for me, uh, and I've discovered that I'm actually quite good at it. Like I put my dog in a trance first, and I was like, I think I have a special touch. And then I tried my friend's dog. The dog also wanted to trance, so I was like, I think I could do this for real. Is that gonna go behind your headshot between special and <laughs> special <laughs> special kills? <laughs> yeah, right, right on my resume. To get you a movie with lots of dogs. There we go. That would be a dream. There we go. Uh, or working with kids. I would love to work with kids too, but I think dogs are really like my real passion. Thank you. Next question. Hi. Hello, you and your jumping around <laughs> with <Dinah. laughs> I think that would be great. You, let's see how I, I, I word this. Uh, 
do you share her seriousness, or do you, uh, do you, do you uh, how do you, do you goof off, or uh, do you feel that you have that in common, in terms of being a, in, being a situation and knowing when to do what? Um, I, I, I am quite serious. I, I, I definitely goof off too. I mean, my best friend and my husband are over there. They'll tell you, like, I definitely goof, goof off too, but um, I take myself a, a little too seriously sometimes. It's one of my, like, we were talking about this the other night. I like to sing, cannot do karaoke. I won't do it. I won't. I, I like to, I want to. I'm so self. <laughs> Thank you for that support. <laughs> Um, is, is he supporting not doing karaoke? What are we supporting? Whatever it is, it's making me feel good. <laughs> Amen, baby. That's cool. All right, but, but tell me. Huh? So yeah, like I just I I think the reason why I don't do it is because I take myself too seriously. I'm like I want it to sound good. You and want to hit the perfect note. I want to hit the perfect note. I want to deliver a performance that makes you feel something. But it's like you're just just go have fun. Yeah. So yeah, I do take myself seriously. I know good character plays and build someone. We gotta work something out. Give me a few more videos first. Make that happen. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite answer to the fans that complain about publicity? Oh, I mean, they're a great couple. I don't know what's to hate. I don't know. They well, what do you mean? When do they complain about Elicity? Like online? Yeah, yeah. Like you go into the forums, and they, there's a really there's there's kind of a um, fight between the people that support her and the people that actually don't want don't even want the character to show it. So there's that fight between the, the fans. I have noticed that actually, yeah. It's funny, that's one thing that's different about this fandom as well, is there is this, it's almost like if the character that's a fan's favorite character isn't like on screen, there's like, you know, anger from the other side, which, I don't know, you know, I think it kind of adds to, I, I don't dislike it, as long as everybody's being nice, it's like you can root for the sports team you want to root for, and I think that there's some good fun in that, as long as everybody is kind. Personally, I, I think all this needs is, is I, I think they're a great little couple. I'm like, I, I love watching them. I have no problems with them. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a part of the fandom for sure, but it's, you know, it's all right. So, you've had some time, Meryl Streep performance. You have, you have to have your suffix choice right here. You have to pick one. So tough. I really love her in Marvin's room. Mm. Death becomes her as well. Um, and I love her in Into the Woods. It's like there's too many to... You can't pick I one, can't can pick you? I can't pick one. I can't do it. It's not fair. She's so good in everything. What else are there? What are there? Um... I like Defending Your Life, which is, you know, which is a... Have you seen that one? No. Uh, Albert Brooks. No. We're doing, I mean, you can rent it. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's a really good. It's really good. And it's not a typical girlfriend role. It seems like it is, and then she makes it amazing. But it, Defending Your Life? Defending Your Life. It came out in 91. Uh, but once, it, are you interested in, given that you said that you might take yourself seriously, you think that, uh, not necessarily a, a, a musical comedy, uh, but, but a comedy, do you think that that would be something you want to be able to step away from once you want to do something different from what you're doing now? Totally, yeah. yeah. I'm so into that. Like, we're, the first script that I started to write is, is a comedy. I love comedy and I think it's important. Um, and I probably would take myself seriously doing comedy as well, but it would be enjoyable. <laughs> Writing takes discipline. Do you have? Do you, do, is, do you find that easy? That you sort of because you, you can't be sad. You, you have to have, you have to write. You, it doesn't matter what mood you're in. You sort of have to have the discipline to write. So you do you find that you have that already, or are you working on that? I'm developing it for sure because uh, we we work long hours and you have like Echo is very good at that. Echo is an incredible writer and um, he has I don't even know how many scripts out. Uh, and he just goes and does it, like he puts his head down on yeah. the weekend and he writes for eight hours. And uh, so I'm not that disciplined naturally. Uh, so I definitely kind of write when I feel it as opposed to on a schedule. It's something that I, I want to work on because you need to have yourself on a bit of a schedule to complete a project. So once we let you go, what's happen what's on your agenda? What are you doing on flying on that? Because you need to enjoy Puerto Rico outside the con. So any, any plans at all? Yeah, so we're gonna go to probably Old San Juan and uh, yeah, and, and look around a little bit. Um, again, my best friend is from Puerto Rico, so Oh you're uh, good though. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all good. Um, and we might go see some of her family, get some food, go to the beach. 
just just chill out a little bit. So what's your favorite, uh, because you're from you know, DR, so what's your favorite Caribbean dish or uh, something that you've been craving for that you haven't had in a while? Uh, well, I've gotten my fix of mofongo while I've been here. There you go. Yeah. I think I've eaten like 25 pounds of plantains. <laughs> And, uh, Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> and the one thing I just found out about is called three fungo. Yeah. Do we know? What is that? It's like a fungo on crack, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What's the difference? It's... Oh my god. We just we all just got hungry. That sounds. I need to get some of that before I go for sure. <laughs> we have one more question over here. Fruit? Bread, fruit. Bread fruit. Oh, really? Yum. Oh, yeah, that sounds so good. Next question before we all start. <laughs> so, my question is what are your thoughts on I love that idea. <laughs> uh, Solo's yours would be awesome. I also really love the idea of doing like a Birds of Prey type of spin off. Like, get the girls together, like all three canaries, maybe Batwoman can come in there. Right? I think that would be so cool. I think that sounds like another script we gotta write. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, I'd love to. Uh, what's the most practical advice you got from any of your of the cast members who had been on the show for a while? Something that really that you latched on to and, and actually worked. Don't read Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and well, not just don't read Twitter. Don't let Twitter impact your decisions as an artist. Uh, Character Which can be hard, you know, but um, I think it was fantastic advice. But I was, I was looking at your Twitter, you seem to maintain a very healthy relationship with your fans and what you do on there, so. I really try, I really, like, I really try to not engage in the negativity and just, like, you know, talk to the people who are being positive and um, it, it helps me and I like to think that, you know, it can help them sometimes too. Any, uh, any, any a crew or executive side of any sort of, uh, female figure that, that sort of you look up to or that, that's there to look out for you guys and sort of and, and empower you and what, uh, look out for your interests? Sure. In our crew? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Wendy Miracle um, is absolutely amazing and she was one of our executives for a long time. She She's moving on to, uh, to ABC now, actually. I'm very proud of her. But she was always such a strong, incredibly um, loving, but, you know, like, she, she's just like a voice of reason you could always go to. And Beth, our new showrunner, Beth Schwartz, uh, same thing. And then there's so many incredible women in our crew too, like um, Danny, our costume designer. I mean, literally, like I can't even keep my head on straight. She carries my shirt. For, I mean, it's like, um, she's amazing. Our head of costumes, Maya. These are all incredible women who are so, so talented and, and just helpful um, on set every single day. All right, so you said that, you know, Things that give you anxiety, you should face them all. So I'm going to put you on the spot so it would be the uh, so you uh, tell this wonderful audience uh, in Spanish, gracias, because I know you, you. She said buenas tardes because she said that that was the only thing that she could say in Spanish. So what would you say to them, you know, and, and a little bit of Spanish, and then we and we and then I'll let you go so you don't suffer through any of the anxiety. Gracias para todo tu amor. Uh, yo te amo. <laughs> Pues el amor viene de allá para acá, así que muchísimas gracias por estar con nosotros. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a ustedes. Muchas gracias.